Now, eight out of every ten suicides in Ireland are male, and that is why Pieta House is launching its Mind Our Men movement this morning. They are calling on the women and men of Ireland to look out for the men in their lives so that together we can help to reduce the rate of male suicide. Now, we're going to be speaking to Joan Freeman, the CEO of Pieta House, in just a second. But first of all, our reporter, Ashling Reardon, went out to Tala to visit one of the many men's sheds that are popping up throughout the country, which aim to help men support each other. Men hard at work, and no, they're not getting paid for it. It's what many men of all ages are doing in special sheds around the country. So a men's shed is any place where fellows gather and work on projects that they're interested in, in the company of other men, and they have plenty of fun while they're doing it, uh, but there's an overall objective of enhancing people's health and well-being by developing good social networks. There are now over 120 sheds in Ireland after John picked up the idea in Australia. I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to visit Australia where the men's sheds originated. Uh, there's about a thousand men's sheds across Australia and they've been going for 20 years. And uh, so when I saw them in action in Australia, I came home here and I felt that they needed to happen here too. Men don't talk face to face, they talk shoulder to shoulder. And I think that kind of sums it up. That's what resonates most with people when they hear about men's sheds. So why open a shed in Tala? At the time, there was a lot of issues in around um, suicide, and there was a lot of suicides here in Tala. And uh, we wanted to open the centre for some, you know, for, for to promote men's health. So how's the shed going down with the lads? A year ago, I didn't know what it was, men's shed. I thought it was something in the, the back garden or something like that, you know. I'll get out of the house. I know a house is a nice place to be when you're nice and warm, but... Uh, you can't stay in the house for a long time or you will end up in a hospital or somewhere. Why do you enjoy it? Well, first of all, for the company, because of the, the men that's here, you know, the, there's a bit of crack and a bit of slagging and what have you, which is, they all take and that's it. There's nobody take any sort of offence to it. But uh, since I've come here now, little projects uh, I'm quite interested in, so just... Yeah, so tell me about the projects. Well, as I say, we're making uh, birds' houses. So we decided to make them like an uh, old caravan, you know, and I like fiddling with little things like that, painting especially, you know, because um, I used to make models years ago, and uh, it was like a pastime to me, so it's much the same now making these. So the lads behind me are enjoying their shed and over the coming years it's hoped that there'll be more than 400 in this country. Ashing Reardon reporting there. Now, um, Joan Freeman, as I say, is with me from Pieta House. Joan, what was very interesting about that is the age profile of the men there. I mean, I, I don't know, you would associate suicide maybe with younger people. Are men of all right ages at risk from this? Absolutely. I mean, um, you're right. We, we focus, Ireland tends to focus on young men, especially, you know, the age around the 20 age mark. But in fact, and while that's, uh, you know, the, the age between 20 and 35 has, you know, is the highest rate of suicide in, in Ireland, the second highest rate for male, su for male suicide would be men of those ages. Really? Yeah. And really, the, the point we've been trying to get across all the time that suicide can happen to anyone. And in particular, we need to get the message across that it is not just to do with mental health issues. In fact, nine out of ten people who come to Pieta House have no mental health issues and have no mental health history. They're reacting to a life event. And of course, you know, the recession that we're going through reflects this right across the world. Whenever there's a recession, there's an increase in suicide. So this absolutely echoes what we're saying which is that people react to a life event. And Joan, can I ask you, I mean, what is the scale of the problem at the moment? I know, I know the figures are, are quite difficult to read, really. Mm. Well, you know, if you take uh, 2012's figure, 2011, there were 523 deaths. Now, they're preliminary figures. That means they could be a lot, lot more, but we'll take those figures. So that's basically 10 suicides every week. So this day, next week, there's 10 more people going to die. But out of those 10, eight of them will be men. And this is why we want to focus on men, because if we focus on the biggest group, the biggest number in that cohort, it means that if we um, uh, invite everyone to take responsibility, that, re that number will reduce significantly within the next year. And John, you say there are eight of the ten will be men. That means there are eight families this week with a male in them who mm -hmm. may commit suicide by the end of next week. Yeah. How can you prevent it? Like, what can 
wives, mothers, brothers, sisters, fathers? Like, what should we be doing with the men in our lives? Well, the, the, the dilemma really was, was that we were depending on the likes of HSC, you know, A&E, the, the emergency departments, then organisations like us, Pieta, you know, uh, One Life, the Samaritans. But there's a very important third component, and that's families, friends and colleagues, because they are with people all day long. They're with them for eight, 12 hours a day. They can see the mood changes. In fact, what we're asking people to do, families and friends, is not to be afraid. We're not asking you to save lives. We're asking you to be the link. Know the, the symptoms, know the signs, know the triggers. And what are they? Okay, so the, the physical signs would be when someone stops sleeping. That, that really, you know, if you have a bad night anyway, the, the world is a very different place the next day. So you can imagine what it's like for a couple of weeks not being able to sleep. Um, you know, there can be emotional outbursts, there can be lack of, 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 you know, poor appetite. But I suppose the most telling of all is the language around suicide, the, the language of suicide, when people start saying that they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel or what's the point. And I suppose the worst one of all is when they say that their family would be better off without them. I suppose, John, you know, if you heard my family would be better off without yeah. me, you would know to be concerned. But if you hear someone saying, oh, I can't see a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, how do people know when you really have to be very worried about it? And also, I suppose, more importantly, what do you do? Men aren't great at talking about this stuff. Well, even if someone says, you know, my family would be better off without me, you know, immediately the other person would say, don't be silly. Of course they wouldn't. And they would shrug it off because they don't think, no family thinks for one minute that suicide can come to their door. So they should be concerned with everything. And, and not even, concern actually is the wrong word. Ask. Ask, you know, you, you're saying you don't see the point. What, what do you mean by that? You know, your family would be better off without you. Why would you think that? What, what? And ask the question. So we're, we're trying to say to people, ask. And it's a little bit like the psychological version of CPR, which is a, a, a life-saving technique. We're saying APR. Ask the question, what, what do you mean? What, what is wrong? What's happening to you? Are you suicidal? Actually say it out. Absolutely. What's wrong with the word? You're not going to cause someone to take their life. You're going to ask the question. The next is P, persuade them to allow you to get help. Don't ask them to get help. You get help for them. And R is to refer to organisations like Pieta or to um, GPs or whoever's in there in their area. But don't just ignore it when you hear a line Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Well, listen, Joan, very best of luck with the Thanks launch. So and thank much. you very much for coming in this morning. Delighted to. And uh, we do have a couple of contacts available in relation to this item. The Samaritans are on 1850 60 90 90. And the website is mindourmen.ie. The number of the organisation is Dublin. That's 01 628 211 one.